This mic needs to move, it's disturbing me. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our first meeting. And uh, thank you for honoring our invite. And uh, my understanding is that the invite was very clear but, uh, on the table of the briefing. Um, I will then introduce my team of research to myself. My name is Dr. Zumara, spokesperson for the Department of Justice and Correctional Services. Um, the panel is led by our minister, advocate Michael Masuta. And next to me is the deputy minister who is responsible for correctional services of the component, correctional services component of the whole department, uh, deputy minister Tabao Makwaitla. And then next to the minister, we have the acting national commissioner, Mr. Zach. Ladies and gentlemen, the minister will then take us through the statement and after which we'll invite questions and answers. But uh, I'll tell you the rules of engagement when we get to that stage. Uh, minister, over to you. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope that I'm audible. Am I audible? I'm not. Something wrong with the mic. Is it on now? All right. Um, good morning once again. My name is Michael Masuta, the current Minister of Justice and uh, Correctional Services. We've called this press conference to announce my decision on the parole application of Mr. Eugene de Kock. Um, that is an unprecedented stance, as you would be aware that we've adopted in view of the publicity that this matter has attracted. Now, on the 28th of May 2014, I received an order from the North Gauteng High Court uh, regarding Mr. Eugene de Cook. In terms of the order, I was required to consider the recommendations made by the National Council for Correctional Services, NCCS, and to make a decision within 30 days. I used this time to peruse the offenders profile and <clears throat> with all the relevant reports from the professionals and relevant bodies on which the NCCS recommendations are based in order to, acqu to acquaint myself with the contents thereof. We deem it appropriate that we start by outlining the parole process and the uh, benefit of, and for the benefit of all South Africans in the spirit of transparency. Parole is an internationally accepted mechanism that allows for the conditional release of offenders from a correctional center into the community prior to the expiration of their entire sentence of imprisonment as imposed by the court. It is important to note that offenders do not have a right to be placed out on parole, but merely a right to be considered for parole after having served the minimum required period of parole. However, parole does not reduce the sentence imposed by the court. Offenders who are placed on parole are expected to comply with the set conditions and failure to comply with this may result in the offender, depending on the uh, frequency and seriousness of the violations, having his or her parole revo revoked to serve the remainder of the sentence in a correctional facility. When the offender is eligible to be considered for parole, the state, the case man management committee called the CMCC prepares a profile for the offender. The CMC 
either recommends for parole or requests a further profile within a certain stipulated period. The CMCC then sends the profile and its recommendations to the Correctional Supervision and Parole Board, which is called the CSPB. The CSPB would then make a recommendation on the offender's application for parole. Such recommendation would be referred to the National Council for Correctional Services, the NCCS. The NCCS uh, is tasked with, amongst other, uh, others, making parole recommendations to the Minister on offenders serving life sentences. Mr. de Kock is serving sentences including life for the murders of a Mr. Jabi Kereng Maponya and the Nelspreit Five, who are Oscar Mulisi Nchota, Glenek Masilo Mama, Lawrence JC Nyelende, and Kona Gabele, sorry, and Tisezo Leballo. These are cases for which he, Mr. de Kock, did not receive amnesty from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC, uh, in terms of the provisions of Section 18 of the Promotion of National Unity and Reconciliation Act 34 of 1995. I've considered uh, the matter and noted the various positive reports compiled by the, rele the relevant professionals and bodies. I've noted the progress he has report he's reported to have made to improve his skills whilst in custody, as well as the assistance Mr. de Kock is said to have provided and continues to provide to the Missing Persons Task Team of the National Prosecuting Authority, the NPA. Our country is a constitutional democracy which is governed by the rule of law. Therefore, in reaching my decision, I have taken into account the relevant laws and prescripts that regulate the parole process, in particular the provisions of the Correctional Services Acts, both Act 8 of 1959 and Act 111 of 1998 and the Correctional Services B Order, Chapter 26, which requires the parole board clerk to inform victims of the date of the sitting of such hearing. During my consideration of the matter, it became doubtful to me whether the victims or their families have been consulted as required by the law, in particular, uh, Mr. Mapun, uh, the Mapunya and Lebalo families. This doubt was subsequently confirmed in a meeting which I have held with these families on 4th July 2014. The meeting was arranged to confirm whether they had been consulted or granted an opportunity to make inputs or representations during the parole hearings by both the parole board and the NCCS. After the meeting, it became clear that none of the affected families of the victims were consulted. This specifically relates to the incidents in which Mr. de Kock was convicted and sentenced. In light of the above, I am of the view that it is fair and in the interests of victims and the broader community that the families of the victims are afforded an opportunity to participate in the parole considera consideration process of the offender as required by laws governing 
our parole process. In the circumstances, I have not approved parole at this stage, but have directed that a further profile be resubmitted not later than 12 months from today instead of the two-year period prescribed by law. This will afford the victims, the offender, and other relevant structures time to participate in and finalize all outstanding processes. This decision has already been communicated to the offender himself. And uh, that is as far as my uh, statement uh, goes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. Um, I forgot that we have colleagues at Cape Town. Um, Lizelle, was the minister audible enough? I'm hoping because indications were that uh, wasn't that audible, but I hope that you guys managed to get exactly what he said. Um, ladies and gentlemen, our, the rules of engagement are very simple. You will just introduce yourself and the media house that you are representing. We will only have two sessions, that being two rounds rather, one in Cape Town and one here. So when you get an opportunity, ask the question and the minister will respond. We'll start in Cape Town. Colleagues in Cape Town. Cape Town, are there any questions? Remember, this is the first and only round. Thank you. Yes. Wyndham, would you like to ask? Yeah. Wyndham. Uh, Sorry. Wendell, um, uh, m m m Minister, uh, uh, if the families um, are in agreement or if the families are consulted, uh, 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 is there a suggestion that given his progress that there is a, a strong possibility or a possibility that he will be uh, released on parole? Um, is that my understanding that it was, you've noted progress and all of that, but because the, very importantly the, the families of the victims weren't consulted, um, that was the sort of the deciding factor. Um, and then also I just wanted to check something with you. Uh, an update please on the... On, uh, uh, on the presidential pardon matter, this is uh, the, the this is the the thing that was the um, commission that was the uh, amnesty pardons commission that was started uh, a few years ago under President Mbeki and related to the um, to 149 people I think that were not part of the TRC. I mean, uh, this is the uh, IFP and the Freedom Front's people. If you can just provide an update to that, because my understanding is that the committee and the secretariat of the Justice Committee had finalized their work already. Uh, so I just want to get an update on that also. And I, I believe that there's only around one, uh, only around that we're going to get some, uh, while you, if you'll indulge me, please. This is to, to the acting, um, yes, and the acting DG, uh, as well as the minister. Um, uh, what is the latest of the G4S uh, matter at uh, Mangung Prison? My understanding is that the uh, report has been finalized. Uh, has the report been handed over to G4 Security? Or what has their response been? Thanks. Thank you, Widow. Anyone else? Anyone else, uh, Lizelle? No one else in Cape Town, Chief. Thank person. you, Cape Town. We're clear. <laughs> See you next week. Um, we'll have to come back to Pretoria because Minister must just um, round up where, with all the responses. Tula says. Thank you, Mtunzi, and uh, thank you, Minister. Just two quick questions. It, uh, like the question in Cape Town, uh, you know, the, the, the question asked in, question, uh, in Cape Town, I also feel, uh, get the sense that the failure to consult uh, and involve the families, uh, particularly in these two cases where it did not receive uh, amnesty, was the deciding factor. But what did you make, Minister, of the other factors? Um, the, the, did they weigh in his favor or did they weigh against uh, against him? I know you talked about his cooperation with the NPA and the other uh, the progress that has been noted. But in your view, without making a decision now, um, did the other factors weigh in, in favor of him uh, receiving parole? In other words, is he, in your view, a suitable candidate bar this failure to follow procedure? And then secondly, this failure to... Uh, to follow procedure suggests there was a failure somewhere in the bureaucratic system. If this is prescribed procedure that is done uh, by officials in the department all the time, why was it not followed and while we, what actions will the minister take to ensure that those who failed in the system are, are brought to book? Thank you. Thank you, Tulas. Um, all right. 
Okay, over to you. Uh, Barry Bateman, Eyewitness News. Uh, good afternoon, Minister. Um, firstly, it's a follow-up on my colleague's question over there. The simple question is, why wasn't this procedure of consulting with the family and the relative parties um, not followed through with? Who failed there? Uh, and, and how soon is this going to happen? Uh, and also consider that this application didn't just happen overnight. This was something coming for quite a while. There was certainly sufficient time to ensure that this should have taken place. The other question also relates to my colleagues. Uh, you said that this is some positive progress uh, with this particular offender. What is this positive progress? What has this particular offender done that uh, is seen favorable in terms of the parole board? Thank you, Bill. Um, that is it. Minister, over to you. <clears throat> yes, le let me apologize that um, the law does not allow us to discuss specific details of the contents of uh, the profile of an offender uh, who is seeking pro. So um, we would not necessarily be at liberty, even if we wished to to go into specifics, especially responding to the last uh, question. So um, all we can say that on the balance, uh, looking at the uh, reports that are supported, um, or the recommendations that are supported by reports from professionals, um, we um, observe that uh, he certainly made progress in accordance with the existing policy governing rehabilitation of, uh, of offenders. The matters that we address ourselves to specifically are not only limited to the primary reason for returning the, the matter back to the process, which is the fact that clearly the affected families were not consulted, but we are saying that this period should be used to do other things that clearly have not yet occurred. And those other things include facilitating uh, the reintegration and the reunification with his uh, family, or at least restoration of his family life and community life upon his release on parole as and when such a decision. Uh, were to be made. Uh, on this point, I must also clearly indicate that the only point that I would be in a position to make a decision uh, whether a person should be released on parole or not is when I am in possession of a profile that is um, arising out of a report or on which a report is based from the NCCS, making a positive recommendation for release on, on, on parole. Now, I'm, I'm having a recommendation as we speak from the NCCS, which recommends release on parole based on a profile, which upon perusal, I'm not satisfied, has complied with all the, the legal requirements. That is what's before me. And I can only make a decision based on what is before me. So I'm not going to speculate what kind of profile would be presented to me in 12 months' time, the state of that profile, and what therefore will be the decision uh, at that particular point in time. But what I want to indicate uh, is that, as you would have noticed from my comments, uh, and that also includes the reasons that I've given for my decision, is that the guiding principle uh, is the rule of law as enunciated in the founding provisions of our constitution and the constitution itself. In particular, we allude, uh, for example, to section nine that says that uh, every person has the right to equal treatment and equal benefit of the law. Now, the families affected here have certain rights by law. In this instance, the right to be consulted, and we had to make sure that that right is observed. Equally, a, uh, an offender in the position of Mr. Eugene de Kock has the right to be considered for parole, and in considering 
his uh, application, we have to look at the profile and its contents and be informed by the recommendations arising out of those, uh, out of uh, that profile or the contents <coughs> to make a decision based on what the law requires of us. So that is the process that we have followed. That is the process that we will follow in respect of every other uh, candidate. With regard to the issue of the shortcomings and what do we do about them, we note that generally there is a lot of good work that's being done. There are profiles that are coming through which are satisfactory, but there may be instances here and there where there might be inconsistency or a, 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 a weakness in our processes in the system. So what we are intending to do is to review the whole system, look at uh, the rules governing parole, look at the institutions that process parole applications, make sure that all the rules of fairness uh, uh, and the law in general is fully complied with and, and apply those strictly in considering applications that are, bought, are brought before us. That is the approach we intend um, uh, uh, to take. Um, <clears throat> so, so in short, I would only be in a position to answer the question whether if the consultation process is successful, will Mr. Uh, Eugene de Kock be released uh, on pro uh, or not at the time when I consider a revised, uh, up, a revised uh, uh, profile on the basis of which a revised uh, or, or the same recommendation that I've received is resubmitted uh, as per the directive that we've given. And, and there we have said that we, we want this matter to be expedited and concluded uh, within uh, 12 months from today, uh, despite the fact that the law allows us a period of 24 months uh, or two years within which uh, such a process uh, needs to be completed. Uh, I, I, I can say that uh, I have, for example, visited one of the correctional facilities this weekend, uh, the Nels Sprayed uh, Remand Detention Center, and um, I was quite impressed with the level of understanding and application of rules governing uh, parole as well as preparations generally prior to release of offenders uh, to facilitate not only the offender's reintegration, but the community and the affected victims and families uh, in anticipate, prepare them in anticipation of the release of an offender. I thought that was um, a good work that they, they, they are doing or dis demonstrating uh, to be doing uh, uh, there. Uh, the, the issue of uh, Mangaung, I'll leave to the acting commissioner. I know that he has been giving um, regular briefs on work that is being, um, being done in, in that regard. And um, <coughs> the, the issue of uh, holding those responsible accountable Look, I, I don't think that it, it, it was necessarily a deliberate omission on the part of those that processed uh, this application uh, that uh, this requirement was not complied with, in my view. Uh, I, I do think that, uh, you know, not only the uh, parole board, but the actually, actually the NCCS itself uh, did not pick this one up. Um, and as you know, the NCCS is, is chaired by a judge and deputi deputized by a judge. Um, and um, I accept their bona fides in, in handling this matter. However, the law requires me to personally apply my mind uh, to matters that are put before me 
and not simply rubber stamp the recommendations or considerations of others. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, the Acting National Commissioner. Thank you, Minister. With regard to Mangau, the department has provided a report to the Mangau on the 27th of June and have given them 21 days, 21 working days to respond to the reports and the, the allegations that are contained in that report. We are expecting uh, their feedback on the 4th of August. Uh, that would be then when the department takes a final decision as to uh, handing over and withdrawing from that institution. At this point in time, what we have reported to Minister is that uh, the institution is completely uh, uh, in our jurisdiction, in our responsibility, and there is order and stability in that institution. The reported uh, incidents that were happened of stabbings, we have closed down. And uh, our team that is in Mangaung is doing a very commendable job in ensuring that uh, there is law and order in that institution. Thank you. Okay, Minister. Okay. Yeah, sure. I, I, I just wanted to uh, go back to the other question that was asked about the um, uh, parole uh, applications of other. Uh, uh, now come to the presidential. The parole applications of uh, various uh, political prisoners that were convicted. Um, for various crimes and and um, were not dealt with in terms of the truth and reconciliation uh, commission process and therefore are still uh, serving sentences uh, in prisons, uh, notably uh, Durban Westville. In fact, uh, in recent uh, weeks, I, I had calls from one of the uh, um, offenders who is a serving sentence pleading that uh, his parole application be re-looked at because he was not happy with the way in which uh, his matter was dealt with. I have uh, requested the team to uh, look at all those matters, revisit all those parole applications to see if uh, the matters had been dealt with properly so that where these matters need to be revisited, that that actually takes place and then we, we can expeditiously uh, dispose of those matters. Parallel to that process, uh, or the parole process in respect of those matters, we, are also, we have also requested uh, that we be provided with the file uh, that uh, dealt with the uh, presidential pardon question in respect uh, of, of these offenders. Um, so that we can study where the matter stalled and look at processes to resuscitate it. Uh, my understanding, my faint understanding of the matter is that it was actually intercepted by uh, court challenges which uh, caused delays in, in finalizing that matter. But I would be in a better position uh, to give account of what has happened and what we intend to do with it once I have perused the relevant file and um, so as to dispose of the matter. Um, <clears throat> I just want to indicate that uh, beyond the parole system and the, uh, the presidential part, uh, we should recall that there was a TRC process and that TRC process was concluded. Certain people uh, received amnesty for offenses they committed, uh, others did not. And uh, Mr. de Kock was a beneficiary of the amnesty granted under the TRC, save for the offenses that he's currently uh, uh, serving. Um, and I just want to alert the public that if anyone has a reason to believe that there are other offenses with which himself or any other person may have committed which did not arise out of the TRC process or in respect of which uh, he's not currently serving. In other words, 
offenses that he may have committed and, and, and uh, not tried or whatever, those queries must be, dealt, must be referred directly to the National Prosecuting Authority. This process is confined and limited to consideration of his parole only in respect of matters for which he is currently uh, serving. And just finally to indicate that there is one aspect that still remains, that is still uh, under process uh, arising out of the TRC process, and that is dealing with and finalizing uh, matters relating to reparations. Uh, that is another aspect that we are currently a processing and dealing with uh, within the department. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. You see, the advantage of being addressed by lawyers is that the longevity of their submissions is informed by the financial muscle of a client. <laughs> so, Minister has not been paid to say more. That's why the brief was really a briefing. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.